Deciding whether to head outdoors or to stay at home has never before felt so fraught, as many of us continue to weigh the benefits of getting some fresh air versus the risks of getting sick. Many of us now spend up to 90% of our lives indoors, and our retinas are bombarded with artificial light late into the evening. That means compared with our ancestors, we're exposed to less light during the day and more light at night. So in this video, we're going to discuss sunlight to optimize health. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. There's increasing epidemiological and laboratory evidence demonstrating the local and systemic immunomodulatory, primarily suppressive effects of solar ultraviolet radiation (UVR) exposure in humans. It's essential for life on Earth as a source of energy, light, and warmth, and to maintain oxygen levels in our atmosphere due to the role it plays in photosynthesis. However, it also causes profound changes in the human body. Sunlight allows us to make vitamin D, credited with healthier living, but a surprise research finding could reveal another powerful benefit of getting some sun. Georgetown University Medical Center researchers have found that sunlight through a mechanism separate from vitamin D production energizes T-cells that play a central role in human immunity. Your body creates a hormone called melatonin that is critical to helping you sleep. Because your body starts producing it when it's dark, you usually start to feel sleepy two hours after the sun sets, which is one of the reasons our bodies naturally stay up later in the summer. Research indicates that an hour of natural light in the morning will help you sleep better. Sunshine regulates your circadian rhythm by telling your body when to increase and decrease your melatonin levels. So the more daylight exposure you can get, the better your body will produce melatonin when it's time to go to sleep. From promoting the growth of plants and crops to keeping people warm, sunlight is essential for life. For some people, reduced exposure to sunlight, which occurs in the winter in the US, can lead to the significant mental health challenge of SAD, a form of depression. SAD is treatable with light therapy, medication, talk therapy, and even vitamin D. Skin is the body's largest organ. Its primary role is to safeguard all of our organs by acting as a physical barrier. Most obviously, it keeps microbes that may cause infections out of our bloodstream and protects us from exposure to the elements and it's also responsive to the external environment. When exposed to ultraviolet UV light from the sun, for example, the skin cells that make melanin produce more of the pigment to protect us from damaging radiation. Morning light also seems to help people keep the fat off. You need 20 to 30 minutes between 8 a.m. and noon to make a difference, but the earlier you get it, the better it seems to work. Scientists think the sun's rays may shrink fat cells below your skin surface. More sunshine means you're probably getting more exercise too, which is good for you in lots of ways, including shedding pounds. Miss Penman was one of many who were maintaining a safe distance between themselves and others while they walked in Riverside Park on a recent afternoon. I hope they don't close the park, she said. We need our sun. I've heard it boosts the immune system. Miss Penman may have a point. There is now limited but convincing evidence that moderate sunlight exposure is capable of modulating the immune system and improving health, said Daniel Gonzalez Maglio, a professor at the University of Buenos Aires and researcher in the growing field of photoimmunology. Using latitude gradient as a surrogate epidemiological exposure marker, high UVR exposure has been associated with lower rates of autoimmune illnesses, allergy states, and ANCA-associated vasculitis. Moreover, when compared to UVB radiation, the blue light induces significantly more pronounced hyperpigmentation that lasts up to three months. This means that blue light is capable of affecting epidermal cells, and in particular that melanocytes are very sensitive to this radiation. Recent work has also focused on the role of UVR exposure on vaccination response. Quantifying the relative contributions of direct or indirect mechanisms towards UVR-associated immune modulation has been challenging, as both involve activation of a similar milieu of local and systemic cytokines that influence the number, migration, and function of antigen-presenting cells and regulatory immune cells. Before the invention of houses, street lights, and Netflix, our ancestors spent most of their days outside and their nights were illuminated by nothing brighter than firelight. Now we spend 90% of our lives indoors and our retinas are bombarded with artificial light late into the evening. This affects our sleep, our biology, and our health way more than we might realize. The good news is that a little daylight goes a long way. 
Our bodies are guided by circadian rhythms, 24-hour cycles in our biology, and behavior that make us feel alert during the day and sleepy at night. Their findings published today in scientific reports suggest how the skin, the body's largest organ, stays alert to the many microbes that can nest there. In animal models, it has been demonstrated that UV-induced systemic immunosuppression is related to the development of antigen-specific regulatory T-cells, CD4+, CD25+, FOXP3+, cells, which can be transferred into non-exposed animals. The development of these regulatory cells is associated with a particular environment of soluble molecules established after UV exposure, which include not only cytokines and PGE2, but also vitamin D. It's known that this environment may condition skin dendritic cells in order to specifically promote the regulatory T cell phenotype during priming in regional lymph nodes. A study that followed 30,000 Swedish women revealed that those who spend more time in the sun lived six months to two years longer than those with less sun exposure. More research needs to be done in this area, but it's something scientists are continuing to study. It has been proved that blue light, 415 nm, but not red light, 630 nm, is able to induce pigmentation in type 3 and 4 healthy subjects. Moreover, when compared to UVB radiation, the blue light induces significantly more pronounced hyperpigmentation that lasts up to 3 months. This means that blue light is capable of affecting epidermal cells and in particular that melanocytes are very sensitive to this radiation. These rhythms are regulated by a special set of cells at the back of the eye behind the rods and cones that enable our brains to construct images. They are called intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells or IPRGCs for short. IPRGCs are particularly sensitive to light in the blue part of the spectrum, including bright daylight and the light from our screens. They send signals to areas of the brain that control alertness. Just one hour of low-intensity blue light can increase reaction speeds as much as drinking two cups of coffee. That's great if your aim is to be awake, but not so good just before bedtime. During the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918 to 1919, patients who were treated in overflow 10 hospitals and regularly taken out in the sun when they were in recovery had lower death rates than those who were left indoors in dark and poorly ventilated wards. Dr. Hobday reported in a study published in the American Journal of Public Health. Clearly, sunlight is very important for us, and even small increases in our exposure can improve sleep, mood, and recovery from illness. And there are some easy things we can all do to get more of it. Do some exercise outdoors every day, even if it's just going for a walk. Wake up at a regular time and open the curtains as soon as you get up. Change where you sit so you're closer to a window. Even a small distance can have a dramatic effect on light levels. Use dimmer lights in the evenings. You can even buy color-changing bulbs so you can benefit from blue light during the day and warm-colored lights in the evenings. T-cells, whether they're helper or killer, need to move to do their work, which is to get to the site of an infection and orchestrate a response, Ahern says. This study shows that sunlight directly activates key immune cells by increasing their movement. Sunlight includes much more than UV and visible light Infrared IR, A radiation, 780 to 1400 nm, which accounts for more than 30% of sunlight, can penetrate deeply into the skin and promote the production of ROS and MMP1s by skin cells. The best approach is to have a heart-healthy diet and get the nutrients from foods, Dr. Manson said, active outdoors and to spend outdoors in the fresh air and sunlight. Being physically active outdoors helps people to maintain proper weight, reduces the risk of diabetes and heart disease, benefits bone health, lowers stress, and improves emotional well-being. The list of benefits from physical activity is extensive. Moreover, sun exposure enables the skin to create nitric oxide, which lowers blood pressure and improves cardiovascular health, Dr. Manson said. Hippocrates, the father of medicine, said that if you have a city, that is properly oriented toward the sun, you don't have so many diseases in it. Dr. Hobday noted, Throughout history and all over the world, sunlight has been worshipped for its health-giving properties and used as a medicine. Let us know your opinion in the comment section down below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay safe and be happy.